Hello everyone and thank you for watching our presentation today. My name is Peter Lenz and I'm a lead engineer at the Bertrand Engineer Bureau in Cologne. I graduated about seven years ago in industrial engineering at the University of Aachen with a focus on automotive engineering during my studies. After that, I joined the company Bertrand. Bertrand is an engineering partner in the automotive industry and with over 13,000 employees at 50 locations, um, we are supporting our customers with, with innovative engineering solutions starting from the first idea until the production-ready product at the end of the process. I started my career here in the team of Chassis and Vehicle Dynamics, nowadays working in the team of ADAS um, and being a project lead there for all different kinds of projects that we have. Um, our electronics department um, is developing and validating all the different kinds of hardware and software functions um, which are required to run a vehicle safely on the road. Also part of my job is being a project leader for our self-developed dynamic driving simulator. During this project, we will get a great support from our partner IPG. Um, we run a student research project um, where we analyze the um, capability of um, different um, uh, systems which are available in a car to act as kind of a backup system for steel wire systems in case of a failure. Today, I would like to present this um, uh, research study to you and share the results. Um, I hope you can enjoy the presentation and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. What I will show you today are mainly the results of the master thesis of Mr. Stephen Greil with the title Potential of Vehicle Dynamics Control Systems to Laterally Control a Vehicle in Case of a Steering System Failure. I would like to use this opportunity to thank you, Stephen, for the great work that you've done, your commitment and effort that you put into this work and the interesting discussions that we had during this time. This is today's agenda. I will start with a brief company introduction of Bertrand. After that, I will give you an insight into our motivation to work on this topic. I will talk to you about the requirements that we had and the assumptions that we made. The next part will then be the actual analysis, including the results. At the end, there will be a short summary and an outlook. Bertrand is an engineering service supplier within the automotive industry. We were founded in 1974 in Eningen by Stuttgart and have an overall performance of about 1 billion euros per year. From the initial idea to the production-ready product, Bertrand offers innovative engineering as well as advice on quality and project management to our customers, mainly in the automotive industry, but also outside of it. Bertrand operates with sophisticated technologies of the present and the future. We are offering engineering solutions along the entire production process and value chain supporting our customers with competencies in multiple domains, disciplines, and industries, and following the mega trends which the industry is facing at the moment. With around 13,000 employees at over 50 locations, the engineering partner is represented internationally and offers expertise in all high-tech sectors in Germany, Europe, China, and the United States. So what was our motivation to get into this topic? Today, the majority of steering systems in passenger cars are what is called here mechanical systems. Of course, two modern steering systems have electrical components and systems, but they all have a physical connection from the steering wheel to the wheels on the road. So even if all electrical systems will not work, the driver is still able to laterally control the vehicle due to this physical connection. But as you might know, the industry is facing some mega trends, which have a great impact on future technologies. Two of these trends are the electrification of vehicles and the autonomous driving. Both trends require some changes to the steering systems. Also, the governmental regulations have changed to allow other steering system designs. Following these trends and the regulation, steer by wire systems are a promising technology. In such a system, there's no physical connection between the steering wheel and the road. Sensors in the steering wheel will sense the driver's wish to change direction. These data will be provided to an ECU, which will calculate the required movement of the wheels. So the connection between the steering wheel and the road will just be digital. This system design has some major advantages. It allows autonomous driving vehicles, which do not require a steering wheel. Also, new functionalities will be possible. Due to the no longer existing steering column, the package situation in the engine compartment will get better, and also the complexity of steering systems will decrease, as left-hand drive and right-hand drive can use the same hardware. Also, the situation in case of an accident is less dangerous as there is no steering column which could be pushed into the passenger compartment. But as always, there are not only advantages, but also some disadvantages. 
Besides the need of creating a synthetic steering field at the steering wheel, the consequences of a failure of the electrical system are huge. A vehicle without a working steering system is a huge risk to passengers and other people. The risk is the biggest challenge for this new technology. One way to minimize the risk is to use redundancy, meaning having a second independent steering system. But there will still remain a risk even if it's very, very small. This is the point where the idea come up to use other, already existing control systems within the vehicle to laterally control the vehicle. At first, we thought about what could go wrong with the steering system and which are the failure modes that we want to look at. We decided to have a look at two different cases at first sight. The first scenario is what we call loose. In this case, the steering actor is switched off and is not providing any torque to control the turning of the wheels. This means the front wheels can turn freely depending on the forces induced by the road and the movement of the vehicle. For the second case, we choose the scenario locked, which means that in case of a failure of the steering system, the front wheels will be turned into a neutral position and get locked there, so that they can't move at all. This failure mode would require that the steering actor is still able to work and can move the wheels into neutral position if an error in the steering system is detected. This is a very basic analysis of the potential of the systems, so we decided to work on a level with high abstraction. We concentrated on some simple driving maneuvers and not on realistic scenes on the road. With this approach, we want to generate some basic statements about the general potential of the systems. With this information, some conclusions about special driving maneuvers can be drawn. To give you an example, if we know that the system can drive a radius of 100 meters up to a speed of 50 kph, the system should be able to perform a lane change with a radius between 20 and 40 meters at the same speed. Two of the selected scenarios are described on this slide. The steady state circular test where the car drives on a constant radius and a slalom where we have consecutive left and right turns with a defined radius. The target for the backup systems are to follow the given trajectory and to try to keep the speed constant. From test to test, we then vary the turn radius and the speed, which leads also to a different lateral acceleration. In this first step, we need to do some assumptions. The friction coefficient is set to one for the first investigations. The speed and turn radius are chosen according to German standard rural and highway roads. And for the beginning, we also did not consider the actual behavior of all the affected actors in the vehicle. For such a basic investigation, it does not make sense to do it in a real vehicle. So we decided to do it in a simulation environment. As a simulation software, we choose the tool CarMaker from IPG, which gives us all the options and opportunities that we need to do our investigation. We connected CarMaker with MATLAB Simulink to develop our backup systems and to manipulate the vehicle in the way we need it. We choose a vehicle with an electric mechanic steering system and changed some values to simulate the steer by wire failure described two slides before. To simulate the scenario loose, we set the steering wheel torque to zero. For simulating the scenario locked, the value for the steering wheel angle was changed from the current value to zero with a defined velocity and then kept as zero. To finalize the setup of the test environment, we created the road scenarios with different parameters as described on the slide before. Our first backup system is based on the principle of using longitudinal forces to create a yaw movement of the vehicle and make a turn. This can be done with two different systems. First one is based on the functionality of the electronic stability system, which can brake all wheels individually. If brake torque is applied on the two inner wheels of the vehicle, the forces at the tires will induce a torque about the z-axis of the vehicle to make it yaw. The second system is called torque vectoring, which means that the drive torque can be distributed to selected wheels. So if the drive torque is distributed to the outer wheels, it will induce a torque in the same direction as the system before to make the vehicle yaw. If both systems not only have an impact on the lateral, but also on the longitudinal behavior of the vehicle, the brake torque will slow down the vehicle, the drive torque may accelerate or brake the vehicle. We decided to combine these two systems into one steering system to control the lateral behavior and also the speed of the vehicle. In our first test, we took the described backup system and let it steer the vehicle within the steady state circular test with a speed of 50 kph and a radius of 80 meters, resulting in a lateral acceleration of approximately 2.4 meters per square second. As you can see in the figure at the left, 
we simulated the failure of the normal steering system at 500 meter distance. The backup system is taking over control and adjusting the brake and drive torque at the wheels in order to follow the path. The speed is slightly increasing to 53 kph, but this could be eliminated by adjusting the control algorithms. Here are some more figures with our test results. There's a short peak in the lateral acceleration on the left figure at 500 meters when the normal steering system is switched off. The backup system takes over the control after 0.15 seconds. The yaw rate and lateral acceleration are increasing slightly after the takeover. This is caused by the slightly increasing speed as shown before. In the right figure, you can see lateral forces transferred to the road by each wheel. As it is the left turn in this example, the outer right wheels are more loaded and so the forces are higher on these wheels. As the front wheels can turn freely in this scenario, most of the lateral forces are provided by the rear wheels, which are represented by the blue and green dotted lines. As you can see on this slide, the backup systems manage to keep the vehicle on the given path as required. To test this system with a little bit more complex test scenario, we tried to drive a road with a changing curvature and a vehicle speed of 100 kph, which is normal speed on rural roads. In the first right turn, the system distributes the drive torque to the left outer wheels and breaks the inner right wheels. On the straight part, the conventional drive is working, and in the following left turn, the backup system is again steering with loose front wheels. Here you can see the comparison of this driving maneuver performed with a normal conventional steering system, which is represented by the orange line, and the backup system using longitudinal forces to control the car, represented with blue line. As you can see, there's almost no difference in the reaction of the car. In both cases, it is following the same path. This gives us a first impression of the potential of our backup system to control a vehicle without a conventional steering system. We were not only interested in the question if the backup systems can laterally control a vehicle, but also which suspension parameters have an impact on the vehicle behavior and the brake and drive torque demand. Therefore, we modified the scrub radius and compared the required torque and the remaining wheel angle at the loose front wheels. The basic value for the scrub radius is minus 12 mm. We tested values from minus 20 to plus 80 mm. The results are shown in the figure on the left. As you can see, is the demand for brake and drive torque decreasing with an increasing scrub radius. So a bigger scrub radius would lower the torque demand to steer the vehicle. But changes to scrub radius, especially when it gets positive, have also an impact on the remaining vehicle dynamics behavior of the vehicle. This means that an adjustment of this parameter to always requires some trade-offs to other characteristics of the vehicle. The second backup system that we want to look at is the rear wheel steering. If the standard steering system on the front axle is not working, the vehicle could still be controlled with the rear wheel steering system. As the rear axle is behind the center of gravity, the rear wheels need to be turned in the opposite direction as the front wheels would do. So if the car should do a left turn, the rear wheels need to turn to right, as you can see in the picture above. To reach higher lateral forces, we made the assumption that the rear wheels can turn up to 15 degrees, comparable to a standard front wheel steering system. There are some rear wheel steering systems on the market at the moment, but they are only able to turn the wheels by a maximum 3 degrees. The rear wheel steering does not work with the scenario loose, as the front wheels would just offset the rear wheel movement. So we are only considering the rear wheel steering for the scenario locked. As a first test for the second backup system, we choose again the steady state circular test with different speed and radius. After the normal steering is switched off at a distance of 750 meters, there's a peak for the yaw rate and lateral acceleration. When the backup system takes over, the rear wheels are turned by around 2 degrees and the yaw rate and lateral acceleration are at the same level as before. To show the capability of the rear wheel steering system to control the vehicle, we also did a slalom drive and compared the conventional steering system with our backup system. As you can see on the left figure, the car follows in both situations almost the same path. On the right side, we show the wheel angles. The absolute value of the wheel angles are the same in both situations, just the sign is different, what I already explained before. Looking at these test results, the rear wheel steering has a potential of working as a backup system for a steer-by-wire system to literally control a vehicle as well. So what have we showed you today? Both of our systems, the combination of brake and drive torque, and also the rear wheel steering system, 
have the potential to laterally control the vehicle in almost every situation, as long as the lateral acceleration is below 4 meters per square second. Depending on the error case, so loose or locked, not every system works. Steer by longitudinal forces, so using brake and drive torque, is more complex because the system also needs to control the vehicle speed. Also, steering by longitudinal forces has a higher system demand as the brakes are used more often. What also should be considered is the fact that all new vehicles in Europe has an ESC system, but most of them do not have any rear-wheel steering or torque vectoring capabilities. The most exciting question at the end of such a presentation is, what is next? Within this investigation, we just started and made a short dip into this interesting and important topic. For the next steps, we need to get closer to reality, or in other words, getting rid of assumptions and adding more complexity. This means, for example, getting better models of the actors to have a more realistic behavior of failing steering systems and taking over backup systems. To investigate the influence of several suspension parameters, we need to consider more detailed suspension models as well. And we need to look at more scenarios. For example, a scenario where the wheels are locked in a random position. We will also do more testing. We will add new scenarios, for example, a double lane change. We will do broader variation of parameters like speed and radius. We will vary the friction coefficient and other parameters. We will hopefully end up with realistic driving scenes to prove the potential during normal driving of our backup systems. Also, the sensitivity analysis of suspension parameters can be continued. And one of the next steps will be the implementation of the backup systems on our dynamic driving simulator, which enables us to test the system with real driver inputs, but also get some feedback from drivers. This is now the end of our presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe got inspired a little bit. If you're interested in this topic, have any questions, or would like to join us in our journey towards a steer-by-wire future, please get in touch with us. Our contact details can be seen in this last slide. Thank you very much for spending your time with us and listening to our presentation. Hope to see you all soon and stay healthy.